okay, is re radiated. This is R, re radiated. As I mentioned, in a longer wavelength. Four. Okay. <clears throat> Before this point here. <clears throat> like this. We will come. Now, of course, going to mention the other two points here, of course, if the atmosphere, it is transparent, uh, of course, which is not the case, of course, all that, what you call, the long wave infrared radiation, it may, what you call, uh, would travel unabsorbed. But of course, this is not the case, and that's which result what is known as the greenhouse, okay? To mention this point here, now. If the atmosphere, Okay, where uh, a transparent to the, as you mentioned, to the uh, long wave infra red. radiated by the surface okay they are simply going to mention then that energy okay would it travel This is with the travel, okay, and absorbed. Or, or simply to mention is better, and obstructed. Okay, obstructed to outer space. Okay. Robert, I think I should uh, give me one second here. For outer space. Of course, as you mentioned to you, this is of course this is not the case. Uh, as you mentioned, however, uh, this is. Uh, not okay the case okay uh, as I mentioned to you because the so-called okay uh, the greenhouse Gases, okay, and sometimes we use this abbreviation for it, GH, GS, GS, okay, greenhouse gases, also known as okay, as radiatively active gases. Okay.
And to mention the other point here, if we finish it, we we'll put it down here. Okay. All right. Okay. And as a result of this, of course, what happened here, we call the greenhouse, uh, uh, greenhouse gases, and this result here, then the greenhouse. Gases, okay, efficiently. Okay, they are efficiently absorbed. What you call, of course, that what you call absorb the infrared, infrared radiation, which is basically reflected from uh, from the surface, from the radiation becoming okay, simply becoming heated as a consequence. Okay. Okay, to mention this point here, I suppose it's already just to emphasize, try to emphasize this point here, uh, that uh, of course, uh, to mention that this, the called the re radiated okay energy of course has a longer wavelength wavelength than of course, what you call the absorbed one, which you call then the electromagnetic. Then the electromagnetic energy. Uh, that was okay, that was originally absorbed. Okay. Of course, in the end, I'm going to mention this point here, because the, the net effect of this is basically making the surface is more or less as warmer, to mention this point here. The net effect of the various energy, to put down here, this point, the net effect of the various Okay, energy the transformations okay and basically the re-radiating or the re-radiation <clears throat> I guess if you finish from this one here, I'm just going to take it for this one here. Okay, so that basically will try to make it plus by this one here. Okay. So as you mentioned that the net effect of the various energy transformation and the re-radiation involving <clears throat> okay, involving atmospheric
okay? Or what you call the greenhouse gases, I'm just a variation, atmospheric greenhouse gases, which I showed before, is of course, is a reduction, okay, in Earth, okay, or in Earth's rate of cooling. Okay. Uh, simply to mention the other point, which I think you are familiar, okay? Uh, just to mention this point here now, this process is known as the greenhouse effect. down here <clears throat> house effect uh, simply of course because okay it's a physical mechanism okay because it's physical mechanism is similar Okay, uh, to the warming. Okay, it's similar to the warming of a glass. Okay, of a glass, uh, simply to mention encased space. by solar radiation. Okay. Uh, this is basically all that section is just to explain this effect. And to, of course, in this case, to talk about this natural greenhouse effect, which simply, of course, it has the important role basically on warming the surface of the earth or the planet, which make it more sustainable to organism to live. Otherwise, the temperature will be quite cold. So now we're going to start uh, basically some of uh, another uh, subtitle here. Uh, missions. Okay. Subtitle, which is basically radi uh, radiatively, radiatively, means radiation, which is the active gases, which are the active gases basically in the air. Now, first of course, we have in this one, as a matter of fact, the water vapor. The water vapor, which is the H2O, is the most okay is the most important okay of what you call of the radiatively active uh, constituents Okay, of the Earth's, okay, atmosphere. Okay, and of course, this is accounting. Okay, uh, for about Uh, roughly about 36% of the 
of the overall greenhouse effect. About 36% of the overall greenhouse effect. Okay. Then this is one point to mention here. Uh, uh, the other point I'm going to mention here, of course, this is followed, of course, the second uh, important factor in this basically is the carbon dioxide. Follow it. Okay. By the CO2, carbon dioxide. And basically, its concentration around the impact of it is about, okay. Twenty percent. Now, then we have uh, just uh, some issues. Okay. okay. As you mentioned, first we have the uh, the water vapor. Then we have the carbon dioxide. Now we're going to have here simply what you call some other, what you call a trace atmospheric gases or concentration. Now, basically here's going to be lesser roles, okay, are played, okay, uh, we call it by trace, okay, atmospheric, Uh, concentrations. Of these following, okay, the other thing here, to mention this point here. Uh, one here we have simply as the methane, which is, as you know, is CH4. And then we have the nitrous oxide, We talk about it before, of this mm -hmm. oxide, which is basically N2O. And then, of course, you have the other one is the ozone. O3. And then also we have this one here, which is known as carbon tetrachloride. Chloride, which is basically as carbon tetrachloride, CCL. This is L here. Okay, CL4. And of course, finally, we have the other one called uh, chlorofluorocarbons. Okay, fluoro. Uh, carbons, sorry, which is basically that these are, I'll put it down here so that you know the abbreviation, which is a CFC3. Okay. Now, uh, these, of course, uh, these elements here in which we talk about the methane, of course, as a matter of fact, they are more stronger, of course, absorber than carbon dioxide, though they are in a trace amount. And basically to mention this point here, uh, to mention, of course, as this one here, but that these, uh, 
uh, latter compound okay are much stronger these are much stronger okay absorbers much stronger absorbers of the infrared of course wavelength than the carbon dioxide okay <clears throat> than the carbon dioxide. Of course, what you call, uh, to specify it, basically, to mention carbon dioxide on a per molecule basis. Okay. Now to try basically to explain this more here, this, I put this one here. Okay. Uh, all right. Now to just to compare on, on the basis of the molecule here. Okay. Now, uh, for example, just for this, basically a molecule Okay, of methane, which is CH4, is about 23 times, sorry, okay, more effective okay, than one of carbon dioxide, okay? Of course, uh, no need to mention it here. Of course, these are effective in absorbing what you call the infrared uh, wavelength, okay? So already because that is basically the absorption of these gases, okay? No need to mention, but that is the point. Did you follow this? Okay. Now to compare other uh, molecules, for example, here. Okay, uh, so, the, so basically, as a matter, a molecule of methane is uh, is about twenty three times more effective than one of carbon dioxide. Of course, basically, in absorbing what you know as the the infrared radiation. Now, to put the other point here, I just make it in a point. In case of nitrous oxide, nitrous oxide, which is the N two O, okay is about 310 times. Of course, I'm all comparing it basically to the carbon dioxide, okay? It is 310 times, of course, more effective. Okay. Now, uh, the other point we're going to mention with regard to ozone, which is O3, Okay, is about okay uh, seventeen times also more effective. Okay, uh, then this compound here, which is the what you call. The carbon tetrachloride, the carbon tetrachloride, I'm going to put it down here. The carbon tetrachloride. This is the carbon tetrachloride, because it's about 1400 
times. Of course, also is more effective compared to the carbon dioxide in absorbing the infrared radiation. And now with regard to the, what you call the chloro fluorocarbons, which is basically called the CFC3. Okay. Which is, is about Three thousand eight hundred to almost eight thousand one hundred. Okay, times just to continue for that times uh, more the time is more effective. Of course, than carbon dioxide compared to the other. Of course, in absorbing what you call these radiation. Okay. And because of that, these are the gases, which is normally known as the uh, uh, greenhouse uh, gas. Okay. Mention this point here. Now, these gases. Okay, are known as greenhouse okay warming okay potentials okay And now, but simply, I'm going to mention this point here. Basically, with regard to the carbons, the, the uh, uh, carbon dioxide in this case, we give it a value of what? And just to mention to you here, now, uh, in this case, carbon dioxide has a value of one in this effect. Okay. And now basically, of course, uh, I think you, if you finish from this one here, okay, I'm going to be down here, of course, now, okay. Now, the other uh, point I'm going to talk about <coughs> from uh, the report, which is already, you know, okay, that uh, the water vapor ha hasn't shown any increase comparing to the others, while the others, as you know, almost of these, as a result, started to, once we started with the industrial revolution and using the carbon fuel and all that, which is already we talked about, these are increased many, many, many times, okay? So basically that is the point I'm going to talk about at the moment here, okay? Uh, there is no evidence Okay, there is no evidence that uh, the concentration <clears throat> that the concentration of water vapor in the atmosphere Okay, has increased okay. uh, recently. Okay, of course, we've been recently comparing to the, uh, this since the Industrial Revolution started. Now, the point here to mention the other point, of course, the other thing already, you know, has been mostly increased like carbon dioxide and all the other thing. And just to give you uh, roughly uh, how much. 
ठीक है हाउ एवर ओके फॉर एग्जाम्पल द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड अदर गैस विच वी टॉक अबाउट एंड अदर ग्रीन हाउस गैसेस एंड अदर ग्रीन हाउस गैसेस हैव इंक्रीज्ड मार्केटली ओके ड्यूरिंग ड्यूरिंग द पास्ट सेवरल सेंचुरीज सॉरी द पास्ट centuries because as already you know here okay because of emission uh, simply to mention associated okay with human activities Okay. Okay. Now, usually, it seems according to the data, all the comparison is being made. Uh, simply, what to call? Before, usually, we took it before the years of the Industrial Revolution, which is say around. Seventeen uh, fifty, and then we compare it. Some data it depends how many comparing to the present time, more or less. So basically, we take about this uh, this kind of comparison. Okay. Now uh, uh, to mention this point here. Okay, just I put it down here. Now, for example, the prayer to seventeen fifty or fifties. Okay, the atmospheric. Uh, concentration <clears throat> the atmospheric uh, concentration okay of uh, carbon dioxide okay uh, was about Okay, two hundred and eighty part per million. Okay, uh, this data I'm giving to comparing from that time to almost to uh, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. But basically, whereas in two thousand seven. It was three hundred and eighty-four part per million. Okay, and the other one, of course, I'm going just to mention it, comparing to this. Okay, using to this year here, not to mention. Okay, uh, now for example, in case of nitrous oxide, which is the N two O. Okay, basically the concentration increased from during this period uh, from point two seven uh, part per million, okay, to point three two uh, part per million. Okay, now the other one we talk about is the carbon. Tetrachloride, carbon tetrachloride, 
which we use this abbreviation, CCL4 carbon tetrachloride from essentially zero to almost to uh, point zero zero seven. This is part per billion. Part per billion. Okay. And the other point, of course, we talk about what you call uh, the ground level uh, ozone, or we call it the tropospheric ozone. Okay, ozone from the concentration was 0.25. Uh, part per million to basically point zero three five part per million and the other one which is basically the uh, other compound the chlorofluorocarbons or what you call uh, the CFC3 Okay, basically also the increase from that period from zero to basically uh, to one point two part per billion. For this point here. Okay, to give you the increase between the period from uh, 1750 to almost to this uh, time, which is to 2000, at you this. Now, to mention, of course, this point here. <coughs> okay. Now, of course, these increases. These increases. Uh, have been especially rapid rapid uh, since okay uh, the middle of the 20th uh, century and of course simply to mention this is coinciding coinciding as a matter of fact okay with of course with enormous increases in population okay uh, and just to mention the, the three point in population industrialization And of course, and deforestation. And deforestation. Okay, so as I mentioned to you that, uh, <clears throat> just to give me a second here. 
Make it more easier for you. It will occur like this. As I mentioned, since the middle of the 20th century, of course, all this, okay, we have a rapid increase coinciding with the enormous increases in population, industrialization, and deforestation. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, and this one here, of course, we talk about a, a pair molecule. Okay, but now I'm going to mention a few points here regarding how much in percentages really each of these resulted in the increase of the greenhouse uh, effect. Okay, make this point here. I'm going to leave it just like that. So, uh, okay, so can I have this? Just to, uh, to point this point and then I'll be showing it to you here. Okay. So to mention this point here that overall, overall, the increased concentration of, okay, uh, did you finish from this one? Okay, then I'm going to put here back so that it gives us more time. Let me know, please. Okay. Now, just to mention about uh, overall this concentration. How about it? Now, uh, as I mentioned, overall the increased concentration, for example, of I'm going to put it down here so that it make it more easier to put of say carbon dioxide has been estimated. My percentages. Okay, to account okay, uh, for about uh, fifty five percent, what you call of this called possible. Enhancement of <clears throat> the greenhouse effect. Okay, in percentage, of course, it's about fifty five percent of the carbon dioxide. Now, just to mention a point here because already for the same thing here, while in case of methane, while methane, CH4 is responsible uh, for 17 percent, okay, Uh, just make, for example, uh, uh, nitrous oxide, which is the N2O, just to make it for the possible case for about four or five percent. Okay. Uh, uh, the ground uh, level ozone or the troposphere ozone. Okay. <clears throat> for a 12 percent, okay? And when I said for the whole carbon, the whole carbon, okay? Which is, I mean, of both, uh, 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 of both as a matter of fact for the, uh, 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 the CFC3, and also for what you call the uh, the, uh, the the carbon tetrachloride, so that including both in this whole of carbon, okay. Basically, the whole of carbon for eleven percent. 
Okay. <coughs> you follow that? Uh, now, basically, we're going to talk about what you call uh, the, uh, the increase of from different areas, especially focusing on the carbon dioxide. Okay, so basically, there's some subtitle here. Uh, did you follow this point? Just give me one second, please. Sorry about that. Give me one second. Well, sorry for that because this is from the accessibility. I try to, to organize something for the student here. Okay, so as I mentioned, did you follow all this okay, please? Okay, now I'm going to start as a matter of fact with the atmospheric carbon dioxide. And in this one, basically, just to explain as a matter of fact, uh, um, the different sources which resulted and usually how we monitored during this period of time, as you mentioned, from 1750s till now, what are the, what are the area they use to monitor the carbon dioxide, okay? Uh, to mention this point here, okay? Uh, Now, the atmospheric the atmospheric, okay, uh, uh, carbon dioxide monitoring. Okay, data, as already you know, it clearly show, Okay, a steadily, a steadily increase. Okay, a steadily increase in its concentration. Okay, a steadily increase in its concentration. Okay, uh, during the past five decades or more. Of course, more than that, because we start with at least these are the time uh, which basically they use what you call the observatory to, to locate the concentration. Okay, five decades, okay, or more. They use that uh, monitoring basically uh, since uh, 1958, okay. Now here I'm going to mention, of course, uh, what you call uh, the observatory they are in which they look at, to mention this point here. This is basically from Okay, and observatory. Observatory located. Uh, basically on this area here called Mona Laos. Called Mona 
down here. Uh, that one. Okay. Which is basically, this is a mountain. Okay, on the island. Of Hawaii. Okay. For this point here. Uh, now to uh, uh, give you some uh, data, as a matter of fact, I hope you are okay with this, okay? That the basic for, for this carbon dioxide or the atmospheric carbon dioxide, okay? It seems between, for example, uh, the years, which is as I mentioned here, uh, close to the area of the time of the Industrial Revolution, say between 1860, and 1869, and simply this is considered uh, during what you call the middle, okay, part of the Industrial Revolution. Okay. And of course, as you know, during that time, uh, to mention uh, the combustion of fossil fuel was mainly coal. They use coal at the time here, and to mention this point here. Now, the combustion okay, of fossil. Okay, of fossil fuels. Okay, well, as a matter of, as you know, it was mainly coal. Okay, and basically this is resulted, we call it in a global emission. of about, okay, uh, 422 million tons, okay, of CO2 per year, okay, <laughs> that's some, according to some references. Okay. Now, simply to mention, basically, uh, this is okay. So, almost by uh, say 2004, for example, and by the year uh, 2004, the global emission. Okay. Um, of course, I have no need, no need to repeat of what you call of fossil fuel, but increased. Okay, uh, to make it the global emission simply had increased okay uh, by a factor of sixty nine. Okay, to become as a matter of fact, the, amount, the whole amount of emission to, okay, simply to 29 billion tons. 
tons per year. Okay, so in other words, as a matter of fact, that during the uh, between 1860 and 1869, during that the emission was around 422 million tons per year, while in case basically by 2004 has been jumped to almost to 29 billion tons per year. Okay. <laughs> Now, of course, this is basically what shows to us that is according what you call the increase in the carbon dioxide as a source from what you call uh, from the uh, using of the fuel consumption by the industry and so on. Now, of course, uh, to mention about the other source of carbon dioxide basically from the clearing forests. Uh, so to mention this point here. Okay. CO2 from clearing forests. Okay. And now usually we look to this uh, to the forest as a matter of fact, which basically as Olkin, how they store the carbon dioxide the carbon. Of course, they store a large amount of organic carbon in the vegetation itself, okay, as you know, and also when the leaves will fall to the ground and even when trees die and so on. So there's also quite a percentage will occur what you call a stored in the soil. So we look at these two factors and what's going to happen when the forest is being cleared or what happened here now. To mention this point here now, mature forest Okay, forest stores a large amount okay amount of organic carbon of organic carbon of course as I mentioned, in the vegetation, in vegetation, okay, and also, in addition, and of course, and in dead biomass, dead biomass, okay, at the forest floor okay and soil okay you follow this point here uh, of course when you have all what you call uh, ecosystem like young forest or other thing uh, or forest reg regenerating after distribution and so on of course they will store much less but this in case if we have a mature forest store a large amount but of course if you have a, a new forest also relatively is going to be less now just to mention a few points in this regard now Uh, simply, of course, what will happen here uh, uh, to mention in a summarized way that we look, for example, uh, when you ma make what you call a, de a deforestation or you clear a forest, then we, we look at it in two terms. Either it's going to, to known as, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, medium term or, uh, or long term. Medium term, that means if you clear a forest or disturb forest, and then you allow that forest as a matter of fact, to succeed again, okay, in a form of succession, okay, to, to start regenerating another forest. Well, uh, that process we look at it known as medium term. But what happened here if you uh, 
the clear forest and then you change that land to agriculture or anything else that of course we look at basically a long term just to mention these points here okay now now this observation Okay, uh, suggest that uh, just in a second here. Uh, this observation suggests that, as a matter of fact here, that whenever whenever, okay, an area of a mature forest is disturbed okay is disturbed uh same dimension uh, uh say by i would continue this line here either by is disturbed by what you call uh, uh, by timber harvesting Okay, or is it cleared? Okay, to agricultural use. Uh, use, in that case, all that result what happened here, that is obviously with less organic carbon will be stored. Okay, on the land. Okay on the land. Now we look to this point here, we call that the depletion of stored carbon, we call maybe as except you a medium term okay we call this medium term of course what you call if the soil or if the forest or if the simple if the soil okay allowed to regenerate to another mature forest. Okay. So we call this is what you call as uh, maybe a medium term here or we call it what you call uh, a long term if you finish from this one i'm going to go back here and put this down like this or it's going to be a long term okay called a long term decrease of 
course, in the amount of the carbon, in the of carbon, of course, if it is okay, uh, converted. into an agricultural ecosystem. In other words, it's, it's not been allowed that area to regenerate itself. Okay? Do you follow this? Okay, so basically, as you mentioned, we have, uh, we call that, that's the carbon store, other we call, we have a medium term, of the soil or the area allowed to regenerate to another mature forest, or we call it a long term, if it's not, if, if that area cleared is going to be changed to agricultural ecosystem or even to something else. Okay. And now basically I will stop my lecture here because already we are close to the end here. Uh, do you have any question, please? No? Uh, the reason why I didn't make any what you call today any tutorial because I know tomorrow is basically also is the biology day. So I'm not sure if any of the students are involved in the thesis or so on. Okay. Uh, so hopefully we may do it sometime uh, coming week. Is that okay? So do you have any other question, please? All right, then I guess, uh, or you wanted to repeat anything here? In that case, because already you were close to to the end of the lecture and i'm going to end the session okay okay good day thank you have a good weekend you're awesome for you every thank you very much bye bye